Elizabeth Warren telling it like it is in Washington, D.C. If she keeps this up, there are going to be a lot of liberal Democrats saying, Hillary, we love you, but we really love Elizabeth Warren for 2016. Here's what Elizabeth Warren said yesterday. We need to call out these filibusters for what they are naked attempts to nullify the results of the last presidential election. The force is to force us to govern as though President Obama hadn't won the 2012 election. Well, President Obama did win the 2012 election by 5 million votes, and he has done what the Constitution requires him to do speaking out on the various filibusters for the federal court nominations, the D.C. Court of Appeals, as well as a whole host of other filibusters. Elizabeth Warren is saying what, frankly, a lot of Democrats have been too timid and cowardly to say, which is these Republicans are not involving in the normal give and take of politics. It's not the normal advice and consent. It is, in fact, exactly as she stated, an attempt at nullification. You've heard of the war on Christmas. We'll move on over. Welcome the war on Thanksgiving. Now this is something that actually is offensive. It actually is a problem. Walmart is opening up its its big Black Friday sales starting at 6 o'clock on Thanksgiving. That is going to be wildly disruptive to millions of families all across America who enjoyed a nice Thanksgiving dinner. Unlike Christmas, Thanksgiving is a uniquely American tradition. And yet, you certainly are not going to see episode after episode of, after episode of Bill O'Reilly condemning Walmart, because that's a big wealthy corporation that gives to Republicans. You're not going to see Sarah Palin write an entire book about how awful Walmart is to wage a war on Thanksgiving because that goes against their politics. You can't criticize a Republican who's a billionaire. You can only criticize powerless liberals and Democrats. It's utterly disgusting, but the war on Thanksgiving is here, ladies and gentlemen. So, more and more nonsense about how awful this situation is with people signing up for Obamacare. Oh my goodness, only 27,000 people have signed up. When you factor in all the states, only 100,000 people have signed Well, what do people expect when there has been nonstop right-wing propaganda filtering out through the mainstream media about how Obamacare is the worst thing in the history of the world? Why wouldn't that dampen people's enthusiasm. Why wouldn't that make people want to stay home? Uh, you know, it's a bit rich to spend all your time attacking Obamacare and then say, oh my gosh, and everyone didn't go sign up for it. Folks, I, I, I can't remember a time, well, I do remember a time, the Clinton impeachment. That's really the, the time that, to me, is most similar to the mainstream media just being swallowed up by this tsunami of right-wing bile and nonsense and doing its bidding. Again, you, so you're going to get tired of me saying this, but I will keep pointing out facts and accurate analogies. If in 1789, when the U.S. War Department was created, some general spent too much money on horseshoes, would we really have been better off saying, oh my gosh, having a defense department for the United States is so awful, let's get rid of it, and never having had a defense department? If when the Social Security program was created, uh, somebody, you know, plugged in information wrong and stamps were spent incorrectly, do we really think we'd be better off without Social Security? And if you say yes, try running for Congress on that platform. If the very first federal highway that was built with federal money spent too much on somebody making pavement, are we really better off saying, you know what, 
we, sh we should just have never had any federal highways. The United States would be better off without any interstate highways. Now, you're probably looking at me saying, well, TJ, you're being absurd. You're being silly. Obviously, we have to have a federal highway system. and Obviously, we have to have a defense system. Well, what's obvious to every other country in the entire world that isn't you know, a third world uh, wretch of people living in huts is the federal government has to be involved in a meaningful way in health care delivery. And what's obvious to everyone else in the world is the United States pays twice as much as they do and we don't get as much for it. So until people start pointing out those facts, I have not little respect for journalism, going on right now in the world. I have absolute zero respect. That's right, zero respect for what mainstream journalists are doing in their so-called coverage of Obamacare. If they were gonna be fair and balanced and accurate, they would do story after story after story of the 40 million Americans who have no health insurance or didn't until a month ago. But they won't do that because they're worried about being criticized by conservatives.